Hi everyone. Um, I wanted to do a video today about my craft room process of how I set it up and established what I have now. And I started the process two years ago of recreating my craft room because it wasn't working for me. And if you followed my channel for a while, you'll know that <laughs> I basically my craft room was the junk room and I couldn't even get into the room and I was really depressed about it and I lost my crafty mojo and so on and so on and so on and that whole video is about how I got out of that funk and how I redesigned my craft room so today well actually today wasn't the prompt but last few weeks I've been watching different people talk about their craft kind of directions changing and a lot of it is people who have been in Stampin' Up! for a while or they've been part of a kit club for a while and they feel like companies are just pushing out more and more stuff and making things discontinued before they even have a chance to use them and that they feel like they need to keep up with buying all the latest things and they just can't keep up with the amount of money it costs to purchase them all let alone have the time to actually create with it and that kind of has been making me think a lot and it's not something that I personally struggle with because I choose not to subscribe to to those kind of um, clubs or companies because I've been crafting a really long time and I know what I like and I know what I don't like and I know what I'll use and those three things are very different <laughs> and I've got quite a few supplies now so there's not really a lot that I want for. Um, every now and then occasionally I'll add a new like flower stamp or something just because I get bored of colouring in the same thing but for the most part I'm pretty happy with the items that I have and the other reason being that I haven't been able to work for the last two or three years because of my mental health issues so I don't have the disposable income that I used to have um, I had a very well paying job before and my disposable income was significant and I could just look at the new MFT release and go oh I want to buy all the, their dynamics and in fact I had done that a couple of times and honestly I probably only use about half of those even though they are some of my favourites um, yeah so I don't have that Oh, I have to buy, I have to buy because it's brand new. But I do still see things when I'm out and about, like in the rain or works or hobby craft. I think, oh, I want that, I want that. Um, usually when it's a lower priced item. Um, so I have to be careful when there's like sales on and stuff. Um, anyway, if I wouldn't have bought something if it wasn't on sale then I wouldn't buy it on sale if I wanted something when it wasn't on sale but I thought it was too much money for the price then I might buy it on sale and that's just my personal um, gauge if you like but it also has to meet my other criteria which I'll get into later on in the video so I wanted to start off from where I left off in my craft room setup process video <laughs> that was a mouthful and I will put a description uh, I will put a link in the description below that was a mouthful too um to that video in case you haven't watched it it's a real heart to heart like brutal honesty of how I was feeling and how I got out of a rut with my craft room being a complete junk room so if that's how you're feeling I suggest you start there um Anyway, so moving on from that video, I wanted to go through the things that I've kept the same, the things that I've changed or tweaked slightly, and the things I want to keep working on for next year, or this year. It's 2019. Um, 
and also a bit about my criteria when I'm shopping now which is what prompted the video today because I was shopping with my mum in the range earlier so well rather my mum was shopping in the range <laughs> um so the things that I've kept the same are I still store all of my embellishments by colour and I've actually downsized them so if I just show you this is my rainbow and I have all of my embellishments by colour in these drawers and I actually used to have two of those and they were completely full <laughs> but I've downsized and I've given one of those to my mum so she can store her embellishments the same and she's enjoying that at the moment um, I'm still storing like items together so all of my paper so my cardstock um, my 6x6 six six pattern papers my 8x8, my 12x12, my specialty card stock, so for watercolouring, my Bristol Smooth and my Zig Pens, um, marker paper for like my Nina card stock for my Pro Markers and Alco Markers, my um, art journals for drawing in, sketchbooks, that kind of stuff, and my card blanks are all in one place. So when I want to make a card, I go and pick my card base or card stock to make my own base. I pick my paper, any mats and layers that I want, whatever I'm going to stamp onto, and then I move on to the next stage of my craft process. And I, I love that. Um, I still store occasion themed items together. Uh, the main difference is now that I used to have um, two two more drawers than I do now so I've actually condensed all of my occasions into just those two drawers here apart from Christmas which is in a separate drawer which I've put away now under my desk because I'm not going to be making any for at least six months so I'm kind of done with Christmas to be honest so um I have consolidated a lot of items into there so things that I've changed um Going back to the occasions, I used to store my stamps by like birthday, wedding, baby, that kind of stuff in those drawers as well. But the reason why I changed that is one, because I wanted to consolidate these drawers so they could fit into two drawers. So it wasn't taking up so much space as I've used some of the embellishments up. I didn't feel like I needed to have half empty drawers. And the other reason is when I do my stamping, oh, Sorry guys, my camera's auto-focusing and I thought that I had turned that off. I have. Hmm. I don't know. Sorry about that, there's nothing I can do. Um, anyway, so as I've been using up some of my occasion-themed embellishments, the drawers have been a bit empty. And the other reason being because when I do stamping, I want to get my ink, I want to get my paper, and my stamp set all at the same time and all of that stuff is on the other side of the room now that I've moved house into my new craft room so it makes more sense for it to live there and also because I've designated that as the space for all of my stamps to live so if it gets full I want to purge or really consider what I'm buying um Oh, the other thing I've changed is my jewellery storage, um, so my jewellery making supplies I should say. The reason being is before I had them in drawers, in trays and they were open and I dropped the trays a few times and that was an absolute nightmare to pick up all of these tiny, tiny beads. And the other reason being they got quite heavy, um, especially when you were trying to lift three up to get to the one at the bottom, it was just unmanageable and it was so much hassle that I basically could not be bothered to make any jewellery because of the amount of effort it was to get everything out and put it away so that had to change because otherwise I'm just storing stuff for the sake of having it if I'm not using it so um, if you want to know how I now store my jewellery making supplies I will also link that video below because I've only covered that recently so there's no point going into it again here and 
the other thing that I changed was my ink storage. So I used to store my inks in Ferrero Rocher containers and that worked really well. Apart from now that I'm vegan, I don't eat Ferrero Rocher anymore. So I'm not gonna get any new trays. And to because they were stacked on top of each other in a drawer, I'd have to lift them out to get to the one that I want. And I found that really irritating. And I didn't want to drop my ink pads because I didn't want the lids to come off and in the carpet and blah, blah, blah. So I invested in some letter sorters from Ikea. They were quite expensive. They were 20, like 19 pounds, I think they were. Um, but, I love them and it was definitely worth the investment because I can literally pull out that tray and take it to my desk. I can do the stamping and then I can pick up the ink and put it away and it's so easy to put away. Um, oh, my stamp and die storage. I have mostly kept the same except for I have upgraded my um pockets so i used to make my own out of a5 like page protectors but i changed to purpose bought um protectors not the avery l ones because i still think they're crazy overpriced but i did a lot of research and i've been using the thumb pockets that are like for um businesses use them to put like id cards and uh show dates in um i'll put a link below so and the reason why i did that is because the page protector pockets are very thin and after a while of you flipping through your dies the dies start to cut through the plastic and they worked in a they worked long enough and to be honest they were so cheap you could probably replace them fairly cheaply it's just for me it wasn't worth the time to keep investing in doing that and I got really oh, so, uh, I used to get distracted by the untidiness of it because they started to look tatty so I decided just to upgrade them um what else have I done I've stored all of my alpha stuff together so whether that be alphabet stickers alphabet stencils um cut parts with words on whatever you can think of that's alphabets is all stored in one big basket except for stamps which are still stored over there and in my craft room process video i spoke about storing something via uh because of fun by function rather than type so normally I store things like by like uh, but sometimes I store things by function so this the alphabet stamps I need to use with the ink and the paper which is on the other side of the room which is why I chose to keep them there the same as the birthday and occasion theme stamps that I keep there for that reason as well I'm trying not to make this video too long but I still want to get all the points across um, so sorry that I'm looking down at my notepad. Um, I've also purged three giant <laughs> totes worth of stuff. I've sold one tote worth. I did a craft tabletop sale. I've done a few de-stashes on um, social media and I've done a lot of eBay sales, but I still have two totes left. I also have donated 16 bags to a charity in Watford called, I think it's called Wrap. Uh, basically it's an art charity where they, um, they're basically a warehouse for various supplies that people donate. So it could be businesses or individuals like me and they give them to brownies groups and all kinds of art charities that do different activities with kids and adults and stuff. It's a really great place actually. Their fabric, oh man, like I was like a kid in a sweet shop. I was like, no, don't take it all home. Um, it's even worse when it's free. <laughs> so 
I've done a big purge. I've added an extra desk into my craft room, which is that one there. Uh, it's a bit untidy at the moment because I'm sorting through a few things and getting ready for my mum to come over and craft with me, which has been a big change because now we can actually craft together because we've got room <laughs> and she's got her own dedicated space. And this is just my husband's fold up wrestling chair <laughs> that I I borrow <laughs> when my mum comes around, but it doesn't it doesn't ever really leave my craft room anymore. Um, I've added an extra storage area, actually two. One is for my postage stuff because I've been doing lots of purges. I've been sending things out in the mail. Uh, so I've needed a space rather than just cramming boxes and jiffy bags anywhere I could find a space, <laughs> literally in my old place. Um, I now have like one box that's got all of my supplies and it's so much easier to package things up. It's got my tape and my label printer and all that, all that stuff. And then I've got a set of drawers which I bought in Aldi that have my D-Stash stuff that's up on YouTube in the top drawer. My middle drawer has D-Stash or items that I've bought to sell on eBay. And my bottom drawer has all my spares, so all my spare glues and stuff. And that's probably the only thing that I hoard. Well, hoard is not the right word, but it's the only thing I bulk buy now because often I find that I'm only placing orders for necessities like card blanks, bags, and uh, adhesive, sorry, because they're the things that I'm using up and anything else that I use up I have enough of <laughs> to keep me going for the rest of my life if I'm quite honest especially like paper and stuff so um I don't want to be tempted to buy extra craft supplies that are not like essential tools or consumables that I'm going to keep needing to replace like glues because I just it just makes me hoard because I just end up buying stuff just to avoid paying the postage and they end up getting more of my money <laughs> than I was intending to spend so I'd rather just buy more glue with it um, because I know at some point I will use that glue although just be careful because some of my um, sticky tapes have gone like yellowy um, over time so maybe have a look and see if they're archival safe or not or um don't buy like crazy amounts just a few okay uh things i need to work on i bought too many paper stacks <laughs> i'm a paper addict i think i have about 10 pads of paper extra at the moment um yeah i'm working on that um, what else? I need to keep using up my scraps. Uh, when I was moving house, I had packed a lot of stuff. So every time I had to make a card, I was going into new st stuff rather than using up my scraps. So I actually, for a couple of months between moving and then unpacking again, got quite a lot of scraps, which I recently did a video on how I kind of culled it and, um, tamed the beast <laughs> if you like so I will leave a link to that in the description below as well um, the other thing is now I've moved into a slightly bigger room realistically I've told myself that this is probably about the size room that I will have if I'm lucky moving forward so everything now has a particular space and amount of space given to it so when I fill that up I need to let something go and that's just me being realistic about respecting the space that I have because when things get too cluttered it affects my creativity so what's the point in having the stuff if it's going to make me feel sad and not want to craft um so that has then made me move on to think about how I shop and the really important thing for me in shopping is before I used to say if I could think of at least three projects to make with it then I was allowed to buy it but now I've been doing that 
I realised that I could probably con myself into coming up with three things all the time because I, I'm a proficient crafter. I've been doing it for over 10 years, almost 15 years probably, if I thought about it. And I could come up with an idea for anything. So now I'm getting to a place where I know how much space I have and how much I want to allocate to things. I not only have to think about three things that I would make with it, but I'd also have to think, does it re replace something that... Oh, that I already have. You made me jump. I'm right. doing a video. Okay. My husband just scared the life out of me. Um, so does it replace something that I already have? Will it make it redundant? Do I have something really similar that could do the same thing? Um, yeah, all those kind of things. So... I've completely lost my chain of thought. Yeah, sorry. Um, it's not just enough to think, oh, it's pretty, I could make a project with it. And lastly, the last thing I need to do is update my craft inventory. If you don't know, I have an inventory app on my phone and I store everything I buy in there, including well, anything crafty related, to be honest. And when I go out shopping, I have a look on there first to see if there's something similar that I already own or something I could use instead of what I'm going to buy. And that really helps me not buy duplicates, not buy things that are really similar or get sucked into buying things that I don't need. The only downside is because I've sold a lot of stuff, um, I don't have it in my stash anymore so sometimes I'm looking for something that I don't have anymore so I need to update it and that's it guys thank you for listening to me and I will link down below all of the videos that I've referenced to and if there's any questions you want to ask me let me know and as always thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it and if you like this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel thanks for watching bye <laughs>